All right, welcome back. Today we're talking about scanning larger parts on the automated turntable. Now, just to keep this realistic, we are not using a supercomputer. We are using a i7-7700 on a laptop with eight gigs of RAM, I recommend 16, and a GTX 1050 Ti. Now, this is about a four-year-old gaming laptop. You don't need a crazy machine to run these. It, it does help, obviously, it makes everything go faster, but as you'll see, there's no real lag anyway. So, I've got my part. This is some sort of jig that was created. It was printed on the, uh, the Centium HSE machine, which is a crazy high-end machine tool of a 3D printer. Check that out on our site. Uh, but we're gonna do a scan today. So, fixed scan. We're using the turntable. That's what that is. Not going freehand yet. We'll do that in a future video. Make sure you're subscribed when that comes out. I'm gonna make a new project group. And I'm gonna do a, let's just call it Big Jig. Okay, texture scan is when we got the color pack. We're not using that today, just going geometry and global markers are a really cool feature where you can actually use a frame with markers and put your object inside and then it measures based on the frame. Anyway, future video on that coming right up. Let's hit apply, we got our new project coming out. Now, what I know about this is this part is too big to use the turntable coded targets. We're actually gonna have to cover up the targets so they don't become part of the scan. Now it's really easy to do that. All you gotta do is grab the included calibration card. That's this thing right here. It comes with every 3D scanner and it comes in this nice black velvet case. They really spared no expense, I tell you. All right, I'm gonna make sure this is on here nice and tight. I'll just go like change it up slightly. That should still be good there. Let me point it down a little bit since we're getting all that stuff in the back, but you don't really need to. Make sure it's close enough. And let's try that one more time. Okay, verified. We're getting a bunch of data. What you'll see here is we probably had it a little bit too far or uh, too close or too far from, you know, this would be too close to the scanner. So it's gotta be in that perfect, you know, foot to a foot and a half range. So either it'll get that data on the next go around or we'll just have to rescan that area. Very nice. Now in this preview mode, you'll see it doesn't look like things are lining up right, but don't worry, that's just in the preview. It's gonna sync up here in just a second and it's gonna line all that up and it's gonna look just right. There we go, boom, right there like that. Okay, so it looks like we're missing that front part. There we go. And it looks like we missed a little bit on there, so it is too close to the scanner. And then same with this, this little part right there. So if I just move the scanner away a little bit and redo this scan, it should work just about right. So I'm gonna keep this data. I'm actually going to go hold shift, select my part with the good data, revert and delete selected data. Okay, apply edit. So now, I'm just gonna scoot this back like four inches or so. And uh, I think actually pointing in this direction might actually work. Okay, so there we have that first scan. I'm just gonna hit go again, let it do its thing. All right, so there we go. We've got the scan data. We got that corner that we missed on the last one. Got some other stuff over here. So let's just select the stuff we want. Or I technically could just select the stuff that I don't want right there. I'm just gonna delete that. Hit apply edit. And then we're gonna look at the two different scan groups to see which has more data and what data we're missing. And this is something we could also do with the freehand mode, which we we'll probably do actually here shortly. All right, so we got two scans. We got that one and the second one. So, all right, it's filling in pretty good. I think now's a good time. We could actually turn this over. Okay, so now let's just turn it over and let's do another scan. Okay, so now we're getting some of those edges that we were missing. So hopefully we don't have to do any other orientations to get the full scan. Usually I find anywhere from two to maximum five is enough scans, enough angles to get just about any object. 
Okay, here we go. It is giving me this warning of insufficient memory, but it's still gonna do its job. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, there we go. So I'm just gonna delete the, uh, the data that I don't want. You hold shift, draw a circle, delete selected. Easy as that. Hit apply edit. And we're gonna bring this in here and see how well this aligns automatically with the previous scans we did. For a full 3D printable, validatable, or reverse engineerable part. 3D model, rather. All right, here we go. We, ooh, I just, yeah, we got just about everything. Let's look at, oh, it put all my scans in group two. So I can actually deselect and select uh, individual faces, but it looks like this was our secondary. It looks like this one. So we were missing that little corner, this little face down here, that little edge. But once we get the other stuff in, that upside down scan captured everything. Oh, this is great. That worked out fantastic. All right, and I can go in here. And once again, this is gathering millions and millions of points. It's a mesh. It's a, um, it's a point cloud and they can, you know, you can edit that in many different CAD programs um, or Geomagic Essentials, which comes with the red bundle, which is great. But I mean, dude, you're looking at, all right. So we basically got our 3D scan. I'd say this is good enough for most things. I mean, you can see the details. This is, this is what I love the most. You can see those lines that are right there on the actual model, I mean, super fine details. This is not your $200 scanner or your iPhone LiDAR scanner, which hopefully will get better with time. This is really in another league of its own. Okay, so from here, I'd say this is good enough. I can validate it or I can you know, print it or I can model based on these geometries. So I'm going to go down here to the right, everything aligned perfectly. If you watch our video on the um, scanning a dark object with the Pro HD, I show you how the alignment tool works, but we don't need to do that because it knew what to do. And we go mesh model. Now unwater tight is gonna leave any gaps and holes in there, which might be good for your CAD programming if you're if you're gonna remodel the whole thing, or if we just wanna, hey, let's make another one of these, then I can just water tight and I get a perfectly ready to print STL, OBJ, whatever kind of file you want. So it's gonna take all those points, it's gonna mesh it all together, and you're gonna have a solid part. Now this, is where more RAM and more CPU comes in handy. The GPU is mostly just used for the rendering uh, on the screen and the stuff you're seeing, whereas all the hard work is actually done in the CPU and the RAM. So definitely something to consider. Uh, but once again, this is a four or five year old gaming laptop with eight gigs of RAM, i7-7700. And this literally only takes about two minutes at the most. All right, here we go. We've got, whew, God, this is satisfying. Okay, little things you'll notice. The holes on the side here that don't go all the way through, um, they were automatically filled in by the software in the low detail mode. This is low detail. Um, and so that would be something that if you needed those holes, you could go in and just put a cylinder there. Same with these top holes over here. It gets the relative dimensions, but it doesn't necessarily get the depth as well. And tiny little holes, you, you, I mean, if you think of it as these are two eyeballs um, and they have they have a certain focusing range, it, it's just really hard to get into super tiny crevices like this. So that's something you would do in your CAD modeling software. But everything else here, we got a nice flat bottom. Actually, it looks like we have every detail from... Dude, this is insane. I love it. God, very good. So then I can just take this, I can save your scan and I can save it in pipe cut jig. Now let's do, let's do big jig and big jig one. Now, an important thing to remember is this is not just a 3D model. This is a measuring device. So this is exactly true to size in the 3D scan. Uh, very, very interesting. If you're doing photogrammetry or anything else like that, then you're not actually getting anything measured. Uh, you're really just getting a 3D model, whereas this is precision. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna open up my desktop, go to scans, go to the HD1 big jig, bigjig.stl, and let's drop it in here. Now in your CAD program, you would reset the ori origin and orientation, but uh, instead, I'm just gonna click that. I'm gonna do the rotation. I'm gonna use this one to align the bottom with the build plate. And here you have it. Now it looks like it's actually a little bit too big. This part is too big for the Funimat HT, which is the profile we're using right now. It's a high temperature 3D printer for peak and ultimate and everything. It's only 7,500 bucks right now. A very robust machine. We've been using them for four years, five years now. Let's see if I can get this to fit. Like it won't fit on the build plate. So let's just scale it down a little bit since this is just for fun and games anyway. And I might need to rotate that a little bit, but we can slice it and we'll get a legitimate 3D printed replica of your part. Gosh, this is cool. Yeah, boom, just like that. What is that, 15 minutes? Scan to part, boom. I wanna change that angle a little bit, but yeah, very, very nice. Ugh, dude, all the details. Very, very good times. All right, well, that's all we got today. Let me know in the comments below what you want to know about these scanners. Would you, do you want us to scan a specific object? Do you want to uh, do a you know, type of surface finish or something? Or you know, what would you like to see um, how, about how these work? We've also got the HX and a full lineup of EinScan 3D scanners. So let me know what you want to see. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next video. Like this video if you don't mind. It helps us out on the YouTube algorithm and I appreciate your viewership. So thanks a lot. Have a positive rest of your day. We'll see you on the next video.